everyone. My name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today we're going to be talking about asexuality and I really wanted to bring back this topic because it is June and Pride Month and I thought it would be a great opportunity to talk about it some more and I really wanted to do something that was similar to the video I did a couple weeks ago where I reacted to a kinky speed dating show and it wasn't really that kinky but the spirit was there and I thought for sure of course they've done a million of these they definitely would have done something with ace people right right <laughs> turns out no I looked everywhere Jubilee BuzzFeed cut whoever didn't matter no one has done an ace dating show of any kind that I can find and so you know what call me cut jubilee i don't care i want this to be a thing i need there to be an ace dating show it is such a missed opportunity for education people i think would find it really fascinating like oh wait ace people date like what does that look like i think it would be so much fun please make it happen i want it i need it but in the meantime today what we're going to be reacting to is from jubilee it is a spectrum video part of that series and it is called do all asexuals think the same and if you don't know about that series or jubilee jubilee is a more political channel i would say they do a lot of videos where it's like opposites talking and can they agree on anything and it can get very contentious and very heated i don't love that but i think for this topic we'll probably be fine so the way that spectrum works is they have a group of people that all share something about themselves and then they ask that group a series of questions and then as they answer they line up on basically a big like football field looking thing on the ground <laughs> where they line up and then they say how much they agree or disagree based on their location and then they explain why they landed where they did and it's a really good way of talking about how you can be a thing and still disagree and it's not like a universal everyone thinks the same way thing now especially with asexuality itself already being a spectrum and a larger umbrella term i think we could potentially either see it be like almost everyone saying the exact same thing and then like one outlier or it could be like totally scattered everywhere so we're gonna see how it goes and let's go ahead and get into the video Even though I'm asexual, I still experience attraction. Okay, so I think the way I wanna handle this is as they get to a new question, I'm gonna answer it first, and then we're gonna to react to how people respond after that. So for me, asexuality attraction, I personally use what's called the split attraction model or SAM, and that is when you delineate between sexual attraction and platonic, romantic, sensual, aesthetic, whatever else you got going on. I think it is really helpful for a lot of ace people, queer folk in general. I think it's very useful to have as a tool. Uh, it can be a little bit contentious, even within ace spaces to use it. A lot of arrow ace people use it as well and I'm curious to see how people are going to answer this because I think if you just say the word attraction, most people default to assuming sexual, romantic, all that bundled together. And so I think it's likely some people could say, well, I never feel sexual attraction. And so, no, I don't. That's part of me being ace. But like, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Let's find out. Three, two, one, go. Wait, no, I did it wrong, I'm sorry. No, I didn't, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry to the class. Like there have been times in my life where I've been like, is this attraction or like, is, is something happening here? But for the most part, I have just been like, no, like that person is nice looking, but I don't feel any sort of thing. Asexuality, it really is a large spectrum. Under the spectrum, I fall under demisexual, which basically 
means that I need a strong emotional bond with someone before I could feel any type of sexual attraction. I can look at someone and say, this person is really attractive, but you know, I don't have sexual attraction or like, I wanna date this person. There's also um, like different forms of attraction. I can be attracted to aesthetics, but I don't really have like a romantic attraction. I masturbate on a regular basis. Okay, so no one brought up the split attraction model and I was kind of surprised by that. I think they kind of subtly got there. It does look like we have a pretty mixed group in terms of we have Demi, possibly Arrow Ace as well, so good to see that. Uh, now this question. So this is something I've talked about in videos before and my experience has been it totally depends. Like I will have months, years even as an adult where I don't think about this at all. It's not a thing on my radar whatsoever. And then I will have other times where it becomes more of a habit, like a nightly routine thing, like doing my skincare or taking off my makeup or brushing my teeth. Like it's a self care routine thing, but if I stop doing it, it doesn't really like matter that much. Like you just sort of like, oh, I haven't done that for a while. And then I got off the habit of doing it. And I, I think the way this will go, based on what I know about other ace people, is I think most people will say that they don't, and then a couple will say that they do occasionally, but it's not like fantasizing about other people, if I had to guess. Because ace people, of course, like they can be into it, and I think especially for ace men, a lot of people will describe it as like, oh, it's a need that I have, it's an urge but it's sort of an annoyance. I don't really like doing it. It's more like a biological drive in the same way that like drinking water is. So we'll see. Three, two, one, go. Let's <laughs> <laughs> stay here. <laughs> like, I mean, I guess I'll go first. <laughs> The way that I've been able to find a lot of people like in the ace community is through the kink community. And so usually when I am masturbating, it's things kink related. And so, yeah, I do masturbate on a regular basis, but it's never in the sense that I'm like craving sex or want sense or even find sex attractive. I don't feel like horny often. So like when it does happen, I was like, okay, I think it's scientifically, it's just like, I need to, like, I just need to relieve myself. And Gotta do it. something about it. Yeah, do something about it. <laughs> yeah. It just seems so time consuming to, t <laughs> to do regularly. Like, I mean, I got TV shows I could watch. I don't know. <laughs> I just feel like there's no need for it. You know, I'm really content with myself. Like, if I have an urge, I can eat. <laughs> Personally, like when I get an urge, it's more of an annoyance for me. <laughs> Asexual people, like, just because they don't experience attraction doesn't mean that they don't have any libido at all. Exactly. Yeah. And so, like, you still might feel the, the need for that sometimes, but, like, I feel like for a lot of aces, it's, it's, it's just like, oh, this again? Like, yeah, what? it's kind of, like, <laughs> attached. It, it, it kind of is like a, a chore that you're all right with doing, but there's not really much of a payoff for getting it done. I'm curious to hear like your guys' thoughts on like someone like me who is on the opposite side of the spectrum. Like how do you view that as an ace? Well, I mean, high libido doesn't mean attraction. Mm -hmm. It's, they're it's completely nice. different things. Like I don't get it, but I respect it. <laughs> <laughs> I find sex repulsive. I love the support we have going on here of like, yeah, I don't really get that for me, but for you, it's cool. We support you, you're valid. Like that's really nice to see because some ace spaces are not very accepting and can be kind of gatekeepy. So we got a good group here, love to see it. Also kink representation, <laughs> lots of kinky demi folk out there. I know we have many of them in our audience here on this channel. And also in general in life, I've met lots of kinky and demi people and ace people. It's very common and I will try to find the study, but I feel like I remember reading a study that talked about how there's a pretty big minority within the ace spectrum of people that are ace because 
they have kinks and like the kink part is how they relate to sexuality and not like romantic or sexual attraction. So I think it's interesting to think about. Glad we had the representation. On the question of is sex repulsive to me? When I was younger, I would have said yes. Like it was both interesting, but also like, Ugh, I don't want anyone to touch me or like, I, I don't want to interact with it. Mostly, yeah, it was disgust. I would say it was my primary interaction with it. Like I was like, ooh, like fan fiction could be interesting. But then anything other than that was like disgusting, gross. Don't want to think about it. Don't want to do it. Absolutely not. <laughs> and I think now these days I am much less that way. I think particular acts or body parts can make me feel repulsed, but not the concept of it as a whole. And prediction time here, I think most people will be at least mildly repulsed and a couple people will be like, well, it's okay. I don't really, you know, think about it that much. And then maybe a few people will be like, eh, not really at all. I, I like, it's not repulsive at all. It's just the same thing as anything else. I imagine if you're kinky and you're ace or demi, you're probably going to be a little bit less sex repulsed, but again, it's a spectrum. Everyone's going to feel differently. So let's see what these people have to say. Three, two, one, go. For me, at least it's just like, there's always a bunch of other ways of attraction because like at the end of the day, it doesn't have to be sexual in nature. You can find it with like other, just like other things, whether it's aesthetic or otherwise. Like I'm in like the gray spectrum of it, mm -hmm. of like asexuality. So like there are days where I want, like there are days I feel it. There are like times where I do, there's times I don't. <laughs> Some people communicate through sex. Like that's their way of showing their emotion. And though, it may not be for me. It just depends on who the person is. Because you're supposed to be able to trust that person as well. So if you don't trust them, like, what good is that going to do for you, yeah. you know? And I really do feel like sex, for me, as a demisexual, it's um, like if we're not connected on an emotional or intellectual level, I just don't want it. I'm not repulsed by other people doing it. Like, anyone can do what they want, obviously. It's not something I can see myself participating in. Asexuality is purely about the attraction and not about the action. You know, you can not experience that attraction and still be like, oh, this feels nice. To me, like, sex is like an activity that you do in the same way that you can like hug someone or shake yeah. their hand. Like, yeah. for me, it doesn't have like some other level or like the, the level that society wants to tell you that is inherent to sex. Like, I'm just like, no, it's, it's an activity that you do with one or more other people. Like, that's all it is. <laughs> exactly. I am a virgin. This one, I think it is worth stating there is being personally repulsed and then it's about, I don't want to do this thing versus like, I think it's gross when other people do it and I don't want to be anywhere near it. And I think a lot of people assume that ace people like get freaked out when other people do things around them or they don't want to know about it at all. And I think for the most part, as we've seen here, a lot of it is more about, I just don't personally want to do it. It's okay if other people do it and that's fine. It was definitely more of a spread. So, okay, I, you know, Maybe we do have some differences going on here. It's not gonna all just be clustered together. This one though, I think by the nature of the question, it'll probably be pretty clustered because it says I am a virgin. So like, I guess you could somewhat disagree depending on what activities you've done because what does being a virgin even really mean anyways? Three, two, one, go. It's kind of what I expected. <laughs> For me, like sex isn't like people always talk about it and then it's just like, well, that's not really attractive to me. And I have a supportive friend group. I have hobbies I can do. And it's like, I'd rather find my time doing something else. There's been times where I tried dating people because everyone is doing it. Mm -hmm. But I was always up front, like, hey, I'm asexual. This might not be your thing, you know? And then they're like, no, no, I totally understand. 
three months later, they're having a tantrum because you won't kiss them. I've been in a couple relationships before, um, both with men and a woman. And so, yeah, I've had sex with both um, of my partners. So, yeah, I'm not uh, a virgin. When, when did you lose your virginity? I lost my virginity when I was 15 or 16. Mm -hmm. What about you? Uh, I was... I was 17 when I lost mine, and it's not the greatest story. I I was coerced into having sex by my um, by my girlfriend at the time. Uh, uh, it's okay. <laughs> um, so I lost my virginity um, uh, because uh, it was if you loved me, then you'd have sex with me. And at the time, I was like, okay, this is my first relationship, and. I don't want to, I, I don't have the feel, I don't want to have sex with her, but I'm scared that she might break up with me because I don't want to have sex with her. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so. and that's, that's a really strong thing. It's the one, so of course you'd want to make sure you'd stay with them. I want to hug you. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. It's, <laughs> you support you. I commend you for, you know, having gone through that and being able to still, you know, find yourself and be who you are today. And I want to hug you, but I don't know if I can. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, me personally, I've never experienced any of it. Mm -hmm. I don't wish that I could experience sex. There's moments where I wish I wasn't asexual. Mm. I'm just going to start crying, too. <laughs> it's like it's so ingrained in our society that you should have attraction. You should have a romantic attraction. You should have sexual attraction. So a lot of us, if we don't have the word, we feel so broken until we find it. I was so lucky because I had a parent who knew what the word was. And like my mom actually said, maybe you're asexual, you don't feel those things and that's okay. But so many people don't have that word. I feel invisible to the LGBTQ plus community. Wow, okay, that got really emotional for a second and so vulnerable and like I mean mad props to everyone for sharing it was such a vulnerable experience but it's so relatable to me also at the same time because I have definitely been in relationships where I have felt coerced to perform certain things for people and that my identity wasn't real or valid because I'd done this thing before so why wouldn't I also do this and I was denying them and it was such a struggle for a long time and I also know ace men that have had their girlfriends be shocked that they didn't want to do certain things and then they were coerced and it, it just really is the pain that a lot of ace people go through trying to navigate a non-ace world is so prevalent and yet also so commonly not talked about and not respected as being the real thing that happens and it's it's difficult it's especially dating is so hard and setting up boundaries and having those boundaries be respected like the one who talked about kissing for example like i'm ace i don't really consider kissing to be a boundary for me but it is for a lot of people and you have to be so overly upfront whenever you have a new partner and you're going on dates and talking about okay this is what i do this is what i don't do these are my boundaries and a lot of people will treat those boundaries as something to be knocked down or negotiated or to be compromised on and there's a book i've been reading recently that's called i believe hot and unbothered and there's a section in there that i highlighted with a special color because of this exact sentiment which is compromise is not the be all end all we treat it as though it is but compromising over time can really be compromising your own happiness and can make things worse in the long run especially with something that is so individual and so personal and wow yeah okay so switching gears here let's talk about feeling invisible to the lgbtq plus community so i based on my personal experience i at times i felt like i have been invisible and other times not i think pride events don't really feel like they're for me in general and 
the, the queer resource center on campus or things like that when I was still in university. That also didn't really feel like it was for me being part of those groups or spaces. Like it just, even though it is, you know, the A stands for asexual, like a lot of spaces, as I've talked about before, in queer communities tend to be very sex centric. It's about like who you're fucking and who you're having sex with. And to not do that is seen as sort of weird and alien. And they just don't feel to me oftentimes like very friendly spaces that are like the type I want to be in. And it's not that it's like bad or like queer people are all like aphobic or something. It's just, it's, difficult. It's difficult to balance all of those simultaneous different needs for feeling recognized and respected and wanted and ace people are typically the ones who get left out and there's a reason why typically if there's like in the kink community like a munch or a party that is for queer folk there is even a further delineation between like LGBT and like queer and asexual and they're treated as being separate entities that like occasionally overlap like yes ace pride pride month good stuff but I would say it's usually seen much more as a side note and not like a full member but I'm very curious to hear what their experiences are so let's hear about that three two one go LGBT community of itself is very sexualized. Like yeah. at Pride, it's it, it's very sexual. I think it's hard for them to include the sexuality that is absence of that. I've heard so many people say that asexuals don't get as oppressed as other people in the LGBT community, but that's not all that LGBT community is. It's not just whether you get oppressed or kicked out by your family. <laughs> We're still experiencing things differently from the rest of the world and it feels better to have a community of people. For me, this question is a little bit personal because the closest thing was for me was my auntie because my auntie is lesbian. And when it comes to relation with family, like everyone accepts my auntie, but when it comes to me, it's just like, oh, you don't exist. You haven't tried it yet. It makes me feel a little bit empty because like, you're my family, you're supposed to be, like, you're supposed to be with me, like, you're supposed to be able to comfort me. Like, as you say, like, pride is really sexualized and like, being sex positive and like, encouraging people to have as much sex as they want also means that sometimes they don't want any. I've heard people say like, like what you experience is valid, but you're not queer enough to be in the community. Mm -hmm. And I'm yeah. like, then what is queer enough? As someone who identifies as gay, I really did want to hear everything out that they were saying because I completely agree with everything that they just said. I do see more things on social media. Like I was just on the LGBT um, website and they list like a whole list of different um, ace identities. We are becoming a little bit more open-minded about it, but I don't want to give too much credit because I 100% agree that we need a lot of work in the community. The increased visibility is great. It's really good, but it also is driven by ace people mm -hmm. and ace specs. And there's no one, at least there are fewer people in the broader queer community who are reaching out to us and being like, we want you involved. I do know some people, like they kind of just feel like they don't belong in the community. So they just stick to basically an ace community. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I don't know about you, but when I went to like meetups and stuff, I would ask if asexuals were welcome. <laughs> so I guess where I'd find community, it's definitely like the internet because like I definitely remember watching like this show called like Bojack Horseman and when you when I found out that like one of the main characters Todd was like an asexual himself, I was like, oh wow, here's like someone in actual media space that like I can actually relate to at the end of the day. And he wasn't treated as like a fix it case. That's like the biggest thing mm -hmm. is that if there's an asexual in media, they're just broken. Yeah. <laughs> We really find community through the internet. I've not been with this many A specs ever in my life. <laughs> I am still exploring my sexuality. I pretty much agree with everything that was said there. I don't really have a whole lot to add other than, uh, yeah, I guess sometimes ace people 
don't really want to venture out and risk it and so they stay insular in their own spaces but also yeah i would say for the most part when ace people have been included especially in a larger way it's been because ace people are forcing the freaking door open which is a relatable experience for many groups of people having to force that door open to have that seat at the table on organizing committees planning doing all of that just being there and being present is you have to demand that it be there. Now I have seen in the last couple of years that change a little bit. I have seen more communities and events proactively be more inclusive and saying, hey, we wanna have this kind of thing. We wanna teach about this thing. Can we bring someone in to do that for us? As opposed to having to have an ace person come in and say, hey, this should be happening. Why isn't it happening yet or hasn't happened before? So we are shifting a little bit. It's still very much in the process. Now, I am still exploring my sexuality. I feel like I've done a lot of exploring, but I feel like I've turned over a lot of the main stones, you know? Like there's still areas I haven't gone into, things I haven't done yet, and I think mostly for me at this point, I've done a lot of exploring and I'm ready to find particular people to do those things with, as opposed to like never having done them at all. Like I really had my major phase of doing this, I think when I was in my early 20s, like a lot of people, that's when I really discovered that I was ace. And it was through that exploration of sexuality more broadly that led me to the conclusion that asexuality fit me best. Now everyone has to do that obviously to know what their identity is, but for me it really solidified something and it helped me know more about it other than the representation I'd seen of ace as a label. And I really thought it was just like arrow ace or nothing. And then knowing more about it and how it could be a spectrum i went okay maybe this is more like me fascinating okay now we know now we can process and 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 have labels for things and have a way to describe an internal experience so yes uh, i am not really exploring but i how do other people answer this how will how will that go i imagine well it depends on if they want to explore because i think most people will feel settled even though they haven't necessarily done a whole lot or anything yet. But I don't know, this one I'm not sure about. Three, two, one, go. I used to identify as Demi and then I went to Ace, like Grey Ace. So like, I'm still at like, is this correctly? what I identify as. I am still unsure of myself. Like, I don't know what my own feelings are half the time. And I am still young. <laughs> so I'm trying to be okay with not really knowing some things about myself, at least for now. I think I have it pretty down pat. And I think that's um, one of the misconceptions about the ACE community is that people will approach you and will think that you're not, um, experienced or you don't know what you're looking for or you're too young and you'll figure it out. Um, and that's very um, wrong, especially in my case. Like I feel like I'm really well experienced and I do know what I like and I do know what I don't like. Um, but at the same time, I think that there is still some exploring that I am doing. Like for me, it's like I, I'm in the disagree section because like I feel pretty, like I'm pretty solid in my identity. There are times where I'm like, is, was that attraction? What was that? but like, it doesn't matter what it was. Like, it's not gonna change my behavior. I feel like at this point, I already know what I want and I'm so over like other people judging me for it, you know? I'm just gonna stay here in my little bubble. I'm comfortable being right here, you know? I've had the term since I was like 10. I'm sure my mom probably thought I would grow out of it. I'm sure she thought I was a late bloomer or something, but like, as I got older, it's just like, it just, it just kept fitting. I had an experience where I found the term when I was 11, 12. So when I first heard that, when I first found out about what even sexuality is, I found asexual and I was like, okay, I'm asexual. But then when I got to high school, I was like, you can be straight or something. Like everyone else around you is straight. Yeah. 
And then I was like, okay, no, maybe I'm gay because I'm not straight. <laughs> and then I got to college. I'm like, okay, maybe I'm bi. Maybe, yeah, I like maybe I'm something. The <laughs> <laughs> and only like in the last couple months, was I was like, oh, I finally went back to asexual. It's a broad label and I can be comfortable being under that umbrella. Yeah. Yeah. So lame. Yes. Awesome. We have to like exchange Instagrams or numbers. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I guess that's it. <laughs> I think that was interesting. It definitely was a spectrum of different experiences, and I think this did a fairly good job of representing how different ace people can be different from each other. And I would love to know what you all think about this in a comment down below. As an ace person, as an ally person as well, who's not ace, like what did you think about this? Did you learn something? Did you agree? disagree let me know your thoughts again in a comment down below i think it's gonna be it for today and I, I hope they do more like this honestly i would love to see more ace people in videos like this dating shows opinion shows like i just more representation more discussion on social media would be great like i saw a comment under this video of somebody who was like my daughter showed this to me and I'm speechless. I just found out that I am asexual. So clearly this is a good way of showing people and talking to people, even not just in the show, but people who are watching this about an identity or an experience that they might not have otherwise known about. So all good stuff. I think I liked it. I would love to see more like it. Again, let me know your thoughts in a comment down below. If you have not already liked to, please do subscribe because I have videos twice a week about all sorts of different kink and BDSM and asexuality related subjects. And finally, if you want to support what I do, the best way to do is Patreon. A link to that will be down below. If you do already support over there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you all next time, I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.